Hello everybody and welcome to another how-to video for the Rental Tracks inventory software management system. This time we're talking about order entry. So you've gone through the how-to videos and you've done your settings, you've entered your products and you're starting to get a feel for the system and now it's time to test and see about putting in some orders. So we're going to do the easiest way to enter those orders. There are multiple ways that you can get to it as well by using the calendar, by using the drop-down list as well. But for now we're just going to use our new order button on the right hand side to launch our order selection order type selection screen so if you've entered in multiple order types then they're going to populate here if not if you only have one order type it will automatically go to the order screen for you so i'm going to click on test and it's going to open up my new order test screen so what i'm doing here is entering in the information for the order as i need it so the first thing we're going to enter in is our customer and once i want to make a, a statement here once you get used to the order entry system you're going to fly through this system but for now we're going to take our time make sure we understand every section so the first thing we're going to enter in is into the text field if you've imported your customer list or you've already spent some time entering customer information you can type their name in and it will auto populate anybody that uh, intuitively has those letters in their name we'll select bob here if not you can go to the new customer screen and you can create a new customer information here make sure you fill it all out so that uh, you're entering in proper information because dynamic fields are going to pull from this later on. You can check out the how-to video on new customers later on. So now we've got Bob put in. We're going to select our date range. We'll say that he's renting from July 22nd until the 26th. And that's going to give us our timeline down here. For the internal description, we'll put in that this is our test order. And this is just a field that's for your, your reference. Uh, and you can enter whatever you like. It's an internal description for easy identification. On the right-hand side, if you've entered your departments in here, you can select it from the drop-down list. If you haven't, you can also, once again, refer to the manual. Or you can view the how-to video on creating departments. Uh, when we set up this order type, we did not uh, enter in, or when we set up the contract, we did not enter uh, all order types to be able to attach that contract to. So I have none available to use for my test order, which is fine for the purposes of this video. When I use the drop down menu for payment methods, if you've set up your payment methods, you'll be able to choose how you want them to pay. So for this purpose, we'll select invoice. Transaction ID is a field that you're gonna to use to tie into any other programs you use. So if, for instance, if you're using an accounting program and you need the numbers to sync together, you can do that by entering them in here. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on status because it matters in a number of different ways. So you need to really focus on what status you're putting in when somebody's placing the order. If somebody's calling you looking for a simple price calculation on your items, that's not going to reserve your inventory for in the system. It's just going to provide you with a price to give back to the client. Awaiting approval status is going to be used if you're using our online web shop because we need those orders to be approved by management because people make mistakes when purchasing online that you can also use that status with your employees if you want management approval for every single order that is put into your system a quote is like a price calculation however it's a little bit more formal you're presenting your client with more uh, defined more professional invoicing and it is going to reserve your your products up until the date of the event uh, the date of the event booked is basically saying that the client has agreed to pay you we're going to move forward with the event. The inventory is booked, set aside, and you're ready to go. Contract sent is much like booked, but it's saying that we've created a contract for the client. And we're waiting for them to sign it. Once they've signed it, we're going to change the status to booked. And completed is what you're going to do once the event is over, once the rental is finished, and the items have come back to your inventory. Very important to note about canceled, you cannot go back once you've canceled an, an order. So you'll be prompted saying you cannot go back. It's very important to make sure that you do want to cancel it when you do that. So we'll make it booked for now and we'll move on. References and remarks are for your own internal use as well. So you can use those to enter in any references and remarks you want to attach to this order. Then as we scroll down, we get to our custom field section. So here we have four different custom fields. Very important to note is the internal customer invoice and credit notes that's shown here. Internal and customer is shown in green, invoice and credit note is in red. So if I type information into this box, it is gonna populate on the internal and customer being green. Red is gonna say that it's not gonna populate on that paperwork for the invoice and credit note. Same thing, if I type in the delivery information into this box, I can put, I can guarantee that that will show up on the internal and customer note uh, onto their paperwork, but not on the invoice and credit note. 
And on the right hand side, you've got your payment terms and type of rentals. You can create as many different custom fields as you want. Just use the add edit slash add fields button and it will bring you to the edit layout editor. And this will help you to add any fields. And you can view the how to video on how to add and edit fields in the layout uh, as well. And that will help you understand that. So we scroll down to the bottom, we get to our products entry. So now we're talking about entering products into this order. The first area we need to see though is our factors. So a factor group is taking the base price of the order and multiplying it by a set value you give for a set timeline. And if you want to view the how-to video once again on factor groups, that will help you understand that a little bit more. But briefly, this order is going over three days and 23 hours, so almost four days. So the system is setting a factor of 2.4. So the base price of the item times 2.4 is our cost for this order. You can use that factor or not use that factor. It's completely up to you. Then we also have our tax-free drop-down to select whether we want the order to be tax-free or not. If I go into my select product, and now we need to put the products into the system. So if I type in the first few letters of a product, I can see it populate here. Then in my drop-down list, I can see the name of the product, the category, the price of that product, and the replacement value. I can then see in green the stock is 11 of 11, which means I have full availability of that item. So I'm going to enter that in here and automatically my product line is calculated for me. It gives me my factor of 2.4 times 2,500, giving me a price of $600 with taxes coming up to $678. If I don't want to use my factor and I just want to set it as a standard rental, that it is a one-time price, I can use one days to one and it automatically will change back when I click the button use factor to $250 rental plus tax. So I can do that as well. I'm going to set it back because I would like to use my factor groups. Once you've established them, you can do that. Adding edit, adding lines to this, you can do that as well. If you're looking to add any package products, you can type in package and it will populate with any packages you have in the system. So it's going to look a little bit differently. My package for lighting is going to have two gray boxes underneath. What that is, those are sublines. So that for the client, they see what price they're paying for the entire package, which is $142.56, but they don't need to see all of the little pieces that go into making this package. I can then show hide my sublines if I want my order screen to be a little bit neater. Then there are some other things that you can do as well in here. If you're willing to give a price discount for these items, you're going to use the discount column if it's going to be a dollar-based discount. So if I want to provide this client with a $50 discount, I can type in 50 here and it will automatically adjust my price based on this discount. But if I want to use a percentage discount, I need to use my show height insurance and discount calculator in order to do that. What then I can do is select discount for my drop down menu. And then this next box is to select which product types calculation is based on. Anyone that is in gray is going to affect with this discount that I provide. So rental standard and package will all be discounted and virtual will not. And what the purpose of that is and why I'll leave it like that is that if I'm charging or providing a discount on all of my products, I 